The for-profit healthcare industry is now going through the courts to collect on charges and throwing people in prison if they can't pay. Uh, now, this is a disastrous new report uh, by CBS News, and, and they work with ProPublica, uh, and they talked uh, about this uh, and, and actually detailed the story of Tress and Heather Biggs. So now the next video that I'm going to show you uh, is them basically telling their story to CBS News. Take a look. Tress and Heather Big's son Lane was diagnosed with leukemia when he was five years old. At the same time, Heather suffered seizures from Lyme disease. We had so many multiple um, health issues in our family at the same time. It put us in a bracket that made insurance unattainable. It would have made no sense. We would have had to have not eaten, not had a home. Biggs was working two jobs, but they fell behind on their bills. Then the unthinkable happened. Well, you wouldn't think you'd go to jail over a medical bill. Tress Biggs went to jail for failing to appear in court over unpaid medical bills. What was that like? Scary. Like, scared to death. Because, you know, I'm a country kid. I had to strip down and get hosed and put a jumpsuit on. Bail was $500. Mm -hmm. How much money did you have at that time? Like maybe 50 to 100. That is disastrous. I mean, it that that's brutal. We're we're the only country in the developed world that has this kind of system that brutalizes our own citizens. Uh, and look, uh later on, uh there was a uh uh, uh a lawyer right? Who, this guy is named Michael Hassenplug, right? So now this guy, he actually has opened up a firm, built a successful law practice that represented not these people that are getting sued, going to jail, but representing the people that are suing the poor. Now he says, uh, and he of course runs in uh, Coffeeville, Kansas as well. By the way, we're uh, poverty right uh, the poverty rate is twice the national average. He says, quote, I'm just doing my job. They want the money collected. And I'm just trying to do my job as best as I can by following the law. So he's one of the guys who puts people, again, in jail for not being able to afford their medical bills. But he says, hey, don't blame me for doing my job. Eh, but don't blame me for shutting off people's water. Uh, they just, they want the money. Hey man, look, it's just my job. Rounding up immigrants to the board and putting them in cages. Don't blame me. I'm just doing my job. I'm just doing my job. Look, you can see the parallels, right? And, and, and basically they are throwing people in jail, into cages for not, for, for the crime of being broke. Now, again, at some point making people's lives harder shouldn't be your job, right? But here's the kicker, right? So they say, well, look, uh, there's this law, right? You have to show up to court. And I'm going to explain why this is egregious, right? Well, look, you have to show up to court or else you're in contempt of court. And, and so, look, if you just show up and beg the judge and tell them how broke you are, well, then, okay, then you're not going to go to jail. But you you obviously you didn't go uh, and you're in held in contempt of court. So we get to throw you in prison. That's what that is. But here's the kicker, like I said. Hassenplug, the law that was put into place that allows the courts to be able to do this, was passed at Hassenplug's own recommendation to the local judge. The ad attorney used the law by asking the court to direct people with unpaid medical bills to appear in court every three months, three months, and state that they are too poor to pay in what they call a debtor's exam. or what I like to call it, public humiliation. That's what that is. They drag you into court and so that you can tell the judge, I'm sorry, I just, I don't have money to pay this medical bill. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what am I supposed to do? I'm working two jobs. I'm doing everything that I can to support my family, but I can't afford this medical bill. Please don't send me to jail. Every three months, you have to take time off work or school, right? Get to a courthouse, either through sparse public transportation, which may not exist in Coffeeville, Kansas, or 
waste gas, drive your beater, right? Uh, to spend your afternoon or evening telling a judge that you're too broke. That is disgusting. And, and, and look, what we've learned with other debtors' prisons, by the way, is that sometimes they don't do a good job at actually letting you know when it's supposed to be or working with you, like just in case that you can't find transportation, maybe help to find transportation, or I'm sorry, I, can't, I have to work this shift or I'm going to lose my job. What am I supposed to do? And then, well, if they miss too many, if they miss, I believe, um, two times, well, then you get a warrant, you're found in contempt of court, and you're thrown in jail. And that's it. They set bail, uh, like they said in the video, in this particular area, at about $500 a, uh, a piece, right? Uh, now, that's beyond what most people can afford. But even if you can find that money, there's no guarantee that you actually get it back. And by the way, this whole system lets people lose their jobs, right? Because what happens if you're in jail? You can't work. You can't go to work. You lose your job. You get even more financial stress. You get even more unable to pay off those medical bills. And again, somebody's making money off this. Hassenplug says he gets paid on what's collected. If the bail money is applied to the judgment, he gets a portion. So he could get uh, paid out of somebody else's bail money. See, in most courts, bail money is returned when the, appendant, uh, the dependents appear in court. You get that money back. In this case, you don't get that money back. In fact, in every, in almost every case in Coffeeville, that money goes to pay attorneys like Hasselnplug and the medical debt his clients are owed. So you do not get your bail money back. Even if they can make it, they still don't get it back. And so then what, what do you owe, a bail bondsman? Because most people might have to go to a bail bondsman, but then how is that bail bondsman going to get their money back? And so that's the problem here. This is disgusting. It's wrong. It, it seems very unconstitutional since we were supposed to ban debtors' prisons. But these lawyers and everybody else, they found a loophole around that saying, well, we just brought it, the lawsuit to the court and then we let the courts handle this. Now you have to show up. Now you have to take the afternoon off. And uh, if you don't, you're in contempt because now we've brought the lost the judicial system into it, which it should be a private matter. I mean, these lawyers, these courts, these hospitals, these for-profit insurance companies, they have all brought this back. They have all brought this back. My God, man, we are barbarians. We are crushing our own people, our own citizens into the dirt. And of course, we have the audacity to claim that we have the best medical system on the planet. Yeah, okay, if you're rich, that's true. Yeah, if you're a wealthy person, then of course you can get the best health care in the world right here. But if you're poor and you can't, you know, afford your premiums, or if you can't afford insurance at all, and you have the audacity to get sick, well, then you're screwed. You'll lose all your money. And by the way, if you're in the middle class and you have insurance and you think, oh, no, no, this will never happen to me. I'm sitting pretty. I pay my premiums every month. Nothing bad's going to happen to me. Well, and, and if you think that we don't need Medicare for all, remember, look at this stat. People with cancer, and this is with insurance, by the way, they're often bankrupt by the second year, second year treatment. Again, if you have insurance, that happens. Our system is brutal, barbaric, disgusting, and cruel. It is incomprehensible that anybody would actually be pushing to keep this system. But this is what happens when you have a for-profit motive in healthcare. Look, when people, to go off topic a little bit, when people say Bernie or bust, this is the reason why. Because they see other politicians like Pete Buttigieg, right? Medicare for all who want it, right? Which isn't true Medicare, which still leaves in place a lot of the system that is doing this to people. If they find it understandably morally repugnant, like how dare you try to keep a system like this? Try to perpetuate a system like this. No, no, I cannot in good conscience vote to continue this kind of uh, barbaric system.
Okay. And I keep using that word because that's basically what it is. I mean, people like Hassan Plug, they, they actually make money off this. It's disastrous. And it's all poor, for throwing poor people in prison. Now, just to give you perspective, right? CBS went into the courtroom. They couldn't bring the cameras into it. But they went into a courtroom on debt collection day where this is the day where all the you know poor people had to go in and beg the judge and tell them, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm too poor. I cannot afford these medical bills. You know how many? They watched more than 60 people swear they didn't have enough money to pay. 60 people in one day. And again, this is, this is small Coffeeville, Kansas. Multiply that by, again, you have millions of people without health care, without health insurance to this day. <laughs> Medicare for all. We need it and we need it now. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYT Nation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.